Hello, welcome back to my channel, She Sews Happiness. I'm Mary Ellen and I thought I'd share with you today, once I finished my coffee, uh, my latest make, which I happen to be wearing, the pearl cardigan from Tilly and the Buttons. So what is there to say about this pattern? Well, I think the fact that I'm wearing it and I'm wearing a smile <laughs> means that I absolutely love it. Tilly and the Buttons patterns are not a go-to for me. The styles are rarely to my taste. I can appreciate them on other people, they just don't work for me. Um, that's because my style tends to be less um, loose and floaty and more fitted, that real vintage silhouette. And it's also because I never really had a great experience with their grading system in the past. Now this is the first time I have tried Tilly and the Buttons since they brought out their larger range. So this is actually the first time I've tried the size range which goes from size 16 to size 34 which I think we can all agree is a really huge step for a pattern designer to take and given that this is my first time trying the curve range I am really impressed. So when I first tried making Tilly and the Buttons patterns, I set it a size 7 and their original size range was up to a size 8, I believe. And so at a size 7, you know, I was at the top of the range, but you always think that, you know, when you fall within the size range, the fit's going to be pretty good. I didn't find that at all. I found everything was really out of proportion for me. And I know you're supposed to make adjustments, but the thing is, with a lot of the Tilly and the Button patterns, adjustments are not really extensive. The style of those patterns means you're not always getting fitted garments. So when you're making something like a Nora um, or a Billy, you know, the, the amount of adjustments you're going to make to those pattern pieces are pretty... Um, minimal because they're stretch as well so I mean this is a stretch pattern too and you do expect them to be more forgiving I found this one absolutely forgiving and there's only a couple of recommendations I've got to make about it so I figured this time I'll try it out and I have found that it is absolutely better graded for me sitting at a size 7 in Tilly's patterns so I haven't tried the other one um, I haven't tried the size to eight um, pattern, but I don't think I need to. I'm really happy with this. I'm really happy with the fit. There's only a couple of things that I would change. Is there even a couple? There may only be one actually. And that is, you know, when you're making patterns for curvier bodies, uh, and Cashmere up very, very good at this, um, I think even when you have stretch garments, I mean, Gertie does this as well in her charm patterns range. They do always account for cup sizes as well. And I know that this is being made in stretchy fabrics, but you can still account for cup sizes. And the further up you go in your cup sizes, you may sometimes need to add a dart. And I'm actually convinced that I needed a dart in this pattern. And when I go to make it again, and I absolutely will make it again, I will be adding a dart in there, just under the bust to get rid of that bit of excess because I don't like it. I just hope that that doesn't change the fit of the sleeve. The way the sleeve is drafted on this, you can see here, it's actually a drop sleeve and then the sleeve is attached to it. Um, so hopefully it doesn't affect it too much, but I'm going to give it a go because I do prefer things to be fitted around the bust, um, especially when they are cinched in at the waist, like this cardigan is. So I'll just show you here. It does sit nicely there on my natural waist. I didn't have to make any adjustments to this pattern in terms of the length and just for reference I am five foot one so yeah I'm really really comfortable with where that sits but you can see there to see just that excess fabric I would like to be able to do something about that and um, the neckband in this I took the time to make sure it was eased in properly and I have pressed it within an inch of its life so that there are no puckers and nothing there to interrupt the flow of that beautiful neckband I have also opted to make, so you can see here the balloon sleeve. There are actually um, three versions of sleeves. There's a short sleeve, which will be perfect for the spring and summer months. There's also a long sleeve, just with a cuff, which is the one actually here on the image. 
And then there's the balloon sleeve with the same cuff that you use for the long sleeve. I'm a little bit extra. If you've been here before and you subscribe to my channel, you'll know that. If you don't subscribe, why don't you subscribe? Please hit on the button and uh, follow me on my sewing exploits. But yes, I'm a big fan. Needless to say, I think expanding the size range has done an awful lot to modify that fit of people who lay at the top end of the Tilly and Buttons pattern range um, when it only went up to a size eight. So I'm really, really happy with that. Now in terms of the actual sewing, this is so straightforward. I mean, it says here confident beginners, but if you've never sewn with stretch before, I don't think there's anything here that you should be scared of. The instructions, as is usual for Tilly and the Buttons patterns, are foolproof. So, you know, you've even got your cutting layout accounted for. There's a little glossary. So they call it the jargon bus. There's a little glossary there. So any terms that you may not be familiar with, you just have to look back and you'll find them. You will also find that with Tilly and the Buttons, the instructions are foolproof. So not only are they super descriptive, they're not like some patterns which maybe just say, attach this to this. It tells you exactly what to do. I mean, look at the length of those paragraphs for each um, instruction. You can't go wrong. You also have these wonderful photographs and not all pattern designers use photographs. Some of them just use illustrations. But with the photographs, it's really, really easy to follow and to make sure you're doing things properly. So yeah, I think if you've never sewn with stretch, you will be fine with this. And um, the only thing to be aware of, um, if you are a beginner, don't let it throw you. Just read the instructions clearly. The only thing you might never have done is create this little hole here, which the tie feeds through. But as I say, the instructions are pretty foolproof. I don't think you'd have any issues with that as long as your comprehension is bang on. So really thoroughly recommend this. I am going to make it again. And the fabric that I've used just for reference, because there's quite a lot of different fabrics that you can use to make this up. I mean, the fabric suggestions here are basically any knit fabric with a 20% stretch. Um, so they suggested here like sweater knits, jacquard knits, stretch velvet, interlock, lighter weight French terries. The one that I've actually opted for is a Ponte Roma, which I just find to be a really forgiving fabric. You never have any issues with sewing it. And again, if you're a beginner, and you're not that used to working with stretch fabrics, go for a Ponte Roma because its stability really is um, good for beginners just to get familiar with sewing with stretch fabrics. So this is, again, my colour. Ever since I became a redhead, I've discovered this is my colour. Um, I suppose when I was a brunette, which is my natural colour, by the way, I always wore kind of brown shades and reds and oranges, but when I was blonde, which I was for about eight years, this wasn't a color that worked for me. So I'm really enjoying bringing these explosive colors back into my wardrobe now that I am no longer um, having a Marilyn moment. So do thoroughly recommend this. The only thing that you'll need to make sure you do have in your stash, I had everything else that I needed except for iron-on seam tape, which is really just to stabilize this band here, you know, to make sure it doesn't lose its shape over time. And yeah, just make sure you have some of that and you've got everything probably else in your stash, stretch fabric. Just use your general polyester thread. You will need to make sure you use a ballpoint needle, of course, when sewing with stretch fabrics. And yeah, I don't really think I have anything to say. I mean, it's not complicated. I have no criticisms. I don't really have any tips or techniques that you'd need for tricky parts. It's not tricky. It was really straightforward. So if you do make it, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. If you have made it, let me know what you think in the comments. Hopefully you've enjoyed it as much as I have too. And let me know as well if you've any experience with um, sewing patterns with different size ranges. If you are like me and you may be at the top of one range and the bottom of the other, which tends to work best for you. So I'm just kind of, that's one of the things I'm kind of curious about because sometimes I don't know which one to buy because I don't know actually which one's going to work best for me. But from making pearl, I think I've discovered we'll stick with the 16 to 34 range. 
Hopefully you're all having a fantastic day or a fantastic evening wherever you are. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't before and get in touch with me just in the comments below. Um, I have been enjoying some of the conversations that I've been having there. Happy stitching everyone and take care. Bye bye.